let's try and take the weight for the first few threads in fact. Right, so I think the idea is, obviously this wants to be upright at the back of the tailstock. And so the idea is we get it in the position we like. And I've engineered it fairly well. Now of course the idea is to use this, this lock nut here uh, to just to clamp it down. So now which way which way do we turn the thing? Threads in there, threads in there. So where's the hole? I want to I want to fasten it. So this this lock nut is bigger than the last one, and so I will protect because that that's going to contact this uh, this knurled face. And uh, being being a good watchmaker, I don't like to. leave marks or any evidence of my um, activities on any instrument. So I'll just put a little piece of facing material there. Like that. The span is a bit bigger than it than it could be. And I'll just snug that. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll probably make the final adjustment once everything's been reassembled. Okay, so now that's nice and solid. I've got a, I've got a working face. That's dropped down a bit, but that's okay for, for the time being. I'll just reassemble this, um, this uh, drive collar here. So, there's a little, there's a little oiler there. Where does that lead to? I think... I think... Okay, see, see the little port there? I believe that's a little oil port. I better watch make a screwdriver down there. And that goes all the way. So that goes at least to the center line. That that lubrication port goes pretty much the full depth of that screwdriver blade. So I believe that the oil goes through this uh, oiler, passes these handles, which really only go through the thickness of the metal, and the central area is, is hollow. So the oil will drip down there and then pass through the passage into this little port and then that will lubricate that bearing surface, that large diameter there. The lower one doesn't appear to have any means of lubrication and there's no, no facility for that. So in fact, uh, we would need to lube that manually. Hmm. Okay. So I think it's time to crack out the old Rylang. So I've just filled one of my three new Rylangs and boy do they squirt oil. Goodness me. It shot some oil clear ac across the lathe when I tested it. So I'm just going to give it a little, a little dribble down there. Yes, that's it. film in fact. That's quite clean. Um, okay, so now I need to think about getting that little ball and screw, uh, ball and spring. And I think this will be a little bit fiddly. I might give that a tiny little squirt as well just to stop it crunching too much. In fact, one side of the spring is uh, is fairly coarse. It's just kind of snipped off there. And the other end is, is a properly finished end. So I shall leave that as the outboard end. 
Alright, I'm not even sure that's the correct hole. Maybe it's that one. Yeah, that seems more likely, yes. Oh dear. I didn't really need to remove it, did I? I just need to give it a little dab there. Whoops. Okay. Okay, so now we need to get that collar nearly in place. Okay. Well, I have no idea if this is going to work, and you'll probably say I'm cheating by using a watchmaker's tool. And I've got little collet tweezers here, which has got little hollows of various diameters there. And I may, I may be able to hold it down in place while I insert it. I have to say the lighting in my new uh, space isn't quite up to standard yet. I need to install many, many more light fittings. So it's a little bit gloomy at the moment. Right, what's going on? Oh dear, I don't think that's going to work. I think I'm going to have to rely on my own dexterity. I'll depress the ball and in it goes. Yeah, much easier than I thought. Right, so that's it. It serves just to seat this micrometer in place. Uh, perhaps I should have oiled that first. Well, I can always give it a give it a squirt later. Okay, so that's that's in place. It, it's a little bit sort of snaggy. I don't know why. Like it's not completely circular. Like there it, it binds. It's quite tight. And there it's free, 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 and then it binds again. I'm going to just pop this out. Um, now let's not lose it. Why is it binding? Just try it without the little ball. And without only the spring. Yeah, I think that there's a certain lack of circularity. I just remove that spring. It goes down to about that level. Yeah, it's definitely lacking something. There's, there's a little raised section somewhere. No, I'm, I'll, I'll examine that with uh, with um, I'll examine that between centers or something at some point because that that'll annoy me. It's not a functional part, but I do like things to be a little bit more slick than that. Anyway. So now we insert the new barrel. Uh, one thing I never mentioned earlier is that this is marked in metric. So the rest of my machine is uh, is in imperial units. But actually, it was quite irritating because although that's marked in eighths of an inch, there are no actual graduations. That there's no numbers, so you sort of have to guess or calculate how many eighths of an inch you've you've proceeded. Uh, which is kind of most irritating, really. Um, so anyway, at least at least this new one, although it's uh, in metric, at least it's got numbers on it, so you don't have to guess or keep calculating where you are. So we're going in that way. Uh, let's just give the old keyways a bit of a juicing. Uh, definitely deeper. This keyway is definitely deeper. Does that have a key? No, no key. So why is there a keyway there? Oh. Interesting. 
interesting. There's a key. There's a key. So how is that supposed to go in? So we really have to insert it from the tailstock end because that key will preclude us entering this um, this bar because there's no no keyway on this uh, this side. So we have to insert it from this end. Put some more on this side here. Right. Okay, that will be the cotter, I think, binding up. I think so. No, oh, we're nowhere near the cotter. Just a really snug fit, goodness me. That is tight. Okay. Now we're at the cotter. And in length, that's visible. So in there you can see we need to generate some clearance. And I'll just pull that bar out ever so slightly and pull the segments of the cotter completely out of the bore. And advance that thing. And make sure we lined up with the key. Yes. Let's inch it forward. Okay. And now that's it. Okay. So we've we've forced we've put it all the way through. Really, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tight squeeze, I have to say. Um, we'll give it a couple of squirts of the old Swiss oil gun. Some back pressure, which is always a good sign. Okay, now this I'll just uh, give that a dose, and uh, there we go. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try again with a little ball. <sighs> this time I'm going in from the top. I think I'm getting quite practice at this now. Except now it's not cooperating. That's better. Okay. Our drive wheel is not lined up because of this kind of canting over of, 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 of the uh, of the back casting. So I'm going to have to undo that a bit and just straighten it out, um, and then I think everything will drop into place. And the old adage of stop and think, just stop and think. There's always a reason when something mechanical isn't behaving the way you expect. Forcing it is never the solution. Look at that. You see that? The minute I pulled it around, it dropped in like a dream. There's absolutely no binding whatsoever. It just falls in under its own weight. Okay? So a lesson to me, don't force anything. There's no need to force anything. If it's made properly, which this would have been, it will, be, it will work properly. And in fact, we find a sweet spot at which it works really well. And I think that's about it. So then we um, tighten that nut, and that's not quite it. So that way, maybe. Uh, let me swap this, swap the position of this handle to give me more leverage in the direction I want. So that way. No, that's quite tight. That way, that way, I think it needs to go higher. There goes the ball again. Some people never learn, but what I have learned 
is when you drop something, freeze. Just freeze and listen and watch. Okay? Because if you can't hear where it goes, the already difficult task of finding that little uh, missing or errant component is almost nil. If you can at least hear it pinging around the workshop floor, you probably have a chance of looking in the right place. Anyway, I, I spotted it rolling across the room and saw it come to rest. So I'm just going to leave it for the moment because it's only, it's only getting in the way. Okay, so now we have to work the two screws against each other. Uh, and I want to pull it that way, so I'm going to find my... Right, so now I'm going to try and pull the spanner clockwise while holding the drive area tight so that it doesn't move. Yeah, that's pretty free. Okay, I think I've cracked it. Now, for goodness sake, let me get this blooming lock collar on before I lose that little ball bearing forever. What is it? One eight? Was it an eight? No, it wasn't one eight. Oh, hold on. Oh yeah, that's on the other side of the bench. It was 764ths. If it is 764ths, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a metric fastener. Yeah, that's metric, mate. Okay, let's try a 2mm. Too small. Oh no, that was 2.5 in fact. This is a 3. Yeah, I think it's a 3. Okay, so mixed, mixed fastenings. Mixed fasteners. I'm just lining up the bottom. Oh, actually, I don't want this to ride up at all. So I've got to take up any lash that way. Okay, I'm sort of vague amount of lash there. I, I may I may put a little thrust washer or something down there because it's it's basically just a, a metal to metal uh, contact which isn't ideal but the forces don't really bear in that direction so We'll see, we'll see how it goes. I just find a little brass washer and interpose it, sandwich it in that little area there. So we'll re we'll rehouse the uh, Allen, Allen keys. And I think we're on the home straight. Okay, one more thing, and that is this uh, stock collar. So it serves a dual function of Uh, giving you the facility to, to, to drill to a repeated stop uh, and it also stops you driving the thing too far out. Um, not that I think there's any real danger of, uh, of me doing that. And I think that you see there's a, a kind of nose in there. So that probably only goes on one way. Ah not. So again, it's a suck it and see exercise. That works. That doesn't. Okay, there's only a keyway on that side, of course. No, I think I was just too deeply engaged. Right. So that's that. It's not very elegant, in fact, having such a long, flippant, ugly thing. So I will definitely shorten that, because that's pug ugly. Bloody hell. Come on, Myford. Sort your crap out. What's that about? What's all that? Goodness me. 
Anyway, I mean, that's just them being lazy. All this rest is so beautifully engineered. Why, why, why fail at the last hurdle? Anyway, I'd rather they fail at the last hurdle than at the first. Um, these handles aren't very pretty. Uh, I do have other ball handles and I might in fact change these because these are pretty gash. Very poor molded handles. But you know what? Like I said when I was unwrapping everything, when I was unboxing, I'm bloody glad Myford have got the, the business and the clientele to actually set out and produce a new tool. It's been a long time since the, um, the market has been able to sustain the company producing such things and selling them into, into, the, into the British market. So uh, long may that continue. And actually once it's assembled, it drives pretty smoothly. So you can see how quickly, with, with a flick of the wrist, you can go, and you know exactly how far it is because it's marked off in, in millimetres on the, on the nose end. So with a single flick of the wrist you can go 30 millimetres, that's over an inch, uh, an inch and a half-ish, more than an inch and a half, just like that. Uh, which would have taken, I mean, what have we, what have we here? So that's an inch. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, over nine. I don't know what that means. Nine threads to the inch, it doesn't make any sense, but call it, call it eight threads to the inch means you'd have to turn this handle eight times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to advance the front end of that uh, tailstock that much. And look, I just do it by by waving my hand. So it's a hell of a labor uh, labor saving device. And then, of course, we have the fantastic arrangement, in my view, of having a the possibility to have a striker bar. To remove the thing. So I will lock lock that there and insert some kind of taper tooling in the, in the, in the forward end. So to, to remove that and I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this. Obviously I'm not going to use this piece of bar. It's a bit short really and it's not quite heavy enough but that will just sit there. That will just sit in the lathe and when you're ready you just go and out comes the taper tooling. And that just sits there, it never goes anywhere. That is a real advantage. So here we are with the tailstock remounted on the on the lathe with a new rack operated tailstock barrel inserted. Uh, pretty good upgrade if you ask me. Few little niggling things. Um, this this is a bit a bit gash in my opinion, this long spigot. There may be a reason for that. I'm not sure. They may have um, decided that things crash if uh, if this ball handle is closer to the barrel. I'm, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to study that more closely. Another thing is very close um, passage of the two ball handles when the tailstock is locked. That's the locked position. But they don't crash, so that's fine. Uh, it's quite obvious when you look at the quality of these two handles. I mean that's the original ball that came with the lathe and I suppose that was made in the 1990s. This is some kind of cheap import and I mean that's not the most amazing thing but it's 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 a properly finished little ball end to that lever. That's not. Uh, but it's it's a minor detail. It's got a little bit of a knurled grip there and it's, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Um, it's a little bit ratchety I may play a little bit more with the alignment of the um, the leveling of this thing and that may improve that sound and I may put some grease on um, which might smooth things smooth things up so 
just to give you an idea, these are some uh, tapered drill bits. Now you might think these are a bit big for watchmaking and uh, well, you'd, you'd be forgiven for thinking such a thing. Uh, but the complete watchmaker wants to be able to do everything in his workshop without having to rely on anybody else. And actually, yeah, you can withdraw that barrel deeply in. So I'm just going to experiment with driving the, um, the tool out. I'm going to put my little brass block into the, um, the tail there. I'll drive that in. You can see I don't really have much free there. I'd like a little bit more and enough to have a little heavier knob on the end. And I'm going to bring this whole arrangement forward so that if I do if that drill does go flying, it's not going to actually go flying, it's just going to pop free and it won't end up on the bed of the lathe. So, so let's see how. Yep, free in a trice. Look at that. So I use a test tube brack, so I think that's a 15mm test tube brack for, for my taper tooling. It's plastic, it's not going to scratch the tooling, I don't like metal, I don't like wood, um, and so that uh, kind of polycarbonate or whatever it is is, is a good one. Um, and so that's it. The lever operated tailstock upgrade. Well done Myford.